Hello, 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 and welcome back to another episode of the Believe in UCLA Football Podcast. My name is James H. Williams, a reporter and editor for the Orange County Register and the Southern California News Group. And we have a special guest on the show today. Joining me will be a different Josh than what we're used to as Josh Woods gets ready for his second game of the season. The BC Lions picked up a victory over the Stampeders 25-15. to So Josh already getting a win in the season opener, and they have a game later on this weekend. So while Josh continues to get ready for that, we're joined by a different Josh. As I mentioned, former UCLA running back Joshua Kelly joins the show. He is now entering his fourth year with the LA Chargers. Uh, didn't have to move too far or change colors when he went pro from UCLA to the Chargers. And we will be talking about a number of different things. So we'll jump right into that conversation. We're here with Joshua Kelly, former UCLA running back, a former teammate of Josh, if, I'm, if I remember correctly, at least yep. two two years or so. Well, you were at UCLA for two years, three years. Yeah, so I was there from 2017 to 19. So, yeah. <laughs> it, go, it goes by pretty quick, doesn't it? Bro, it went by fast. <laughs> <laughs> and you're, is this year three with Four. the Chargers? Four. Oh, man. Yeah, it's crazy. It's going by too quick, man. It's, no, so, you're, really... so you're already, a, you're a vet at this point. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm really, at this point, man, I'm mm-hmm. a vet. Or as you could say, like a senior. Yeah, like, I, right, I right. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> You're in your <laughs> senior year with the Chargers, pretty much. Um, but but with, with that being said, you, you know you have a platform. I mean, you had a platform going all the way back to UCLA, but um. You're going to be hosting, I believe, your first camp, if not your first camp in California. Just yeah. tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, man. No, this is an exciting time because this is something that, like, I've been really trying to do. Mm-hmm. And I want to shout out to my wife, Michaela, because she's the one who really implanted the idea. She's the one, like, told me, like, hey, you should have, like, a camp in Lancaster. And I was like, yeah, like, that sounds like a dope idea because mm-hmm. – for me, man, I've always wanted to give back. I've always especially wanted to do it through football because, you know, I play football. So going back home to Lancaster and, like, having that camp would be really special, you know, for them, for those kids because they don't really get a chance to see NFL athletes, NBA athletes. They don't get a chance to see people, you know, who make it out from that position they were in. And to see them, bro, just try to give as much help as I can, whether it's just give my time doing a camp bro i'm excited so yeah shout out to my wife for doing that but i'm excited man <laughs> um just just with that I, first thing that came to mind when you started talking about it was were there any camps around back then when you were kind of coming up at lancaster um <sighs> any memories back from from your lancaster days yeah i have a ton so we didn't really have like a sort of camp where we had like an nfl athlete come mm-hmm. maybe if we did i probably was a little bit too young Mm-hmm. But for the most part, you know, we all know who Paul George is for sure, yep. especially mm-hmm. in Lancaster, Palmdale area. Yep. He had, I, don't, I think he I believe he had a camp, but I didn't, I wasn't playing basketball. Mm-hmm. It was a little bit different. But yeah, for the camps that I went to, man, I went to a lot of the college camps, mm-hmm. a lot of them, UCLA, Cows, a lot of like the local camps, like those actual camps, bro. And it helps, bro. It helps develop you as a player for sure. Um, that I'm I'm actually kind of glad you mentioned that because I was just talking to Josh Woods about that last week. I believe UCLA hosted their Elite Prospects Camp. I'm assuming that's that's probably the one you're talking about. What was that experience like? Kind of take me inside. Like, what what do they have you do? Um, <laughs> or like, who are some of the coaches you're able to talk to? Like, how, what is that whole experience like? Because I didn't go. I probably should have went because I, I I heard there's a whole <laughs> bunch of people lined up on the parking structure to look. And I'm like, maybe, maybe I should have went. I, I didn't know. I just didn't know what I was going to be looking at because, you know, it's not the same faces I'm used to. So just tell All me right. a little bit about it. And and again, what kind of opportunities those provided for you as you were kind of making a name for yourself? Yeah, no doubt. So it was crazy because the UCLA camp that I went to was in 2014. This was like at the height of the World Cup, too. I remember this vividly. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. The World Cup was going on that summer. And then I went to the camp on Sunday and then... At the time, you know, it was Jim Moore. He was a head mm-hmm. coach. He was there. And then it's crazy because Eric Kendricks was there, Anthony Barr, yeah. Miles Jack, uh, Paul Perkins. Like, and those were the guys at UCLA at the time. So it was crazy. Like, they were working the camp. And we got a chance to learn things from them while also being, like, taught, like, actual, like, position work. 
Because in high school, at least in my high school, we weren't really taught the little details and getting into it. So it was really cool seeing, like, dang, like, I have position coaches that are really coaching us, pass pro, agility, all sorts of stuff. So it was fun, man. Um, and and with that, just your time at UCLA. Obviously, you didn't start at UCLA. I believe it was was it Cal Poly it San Davis, Luis Obispo, yeah. or, or was it Davis? It was yeah. Davis. I don't know why I was thinking it was St. Louis Obispo. Yeah, no, yeah. honestly, it was crazy because Cal Poly was like one of our biggest rivals there. Okay, maybe that yeah. I was gonna make it. Okay. Cal Poly and Sac State, huge rivals to Davis. So, mm-hmm. yeah, bro, I started there. It was crazy. So out of high school, I was a two star recruit. Barely had any offers, man. So I just took it to Davis. I was like, all right, I'm going to go to Davis. They gave me a full ride. So then I went up there up north. It was cool, bro. I had a good chance to play. I had a good time up there. Coach Ron Gould, he's a running backs coach for the Rams now. That's right. He at the time was the head coach. And this dude is like the running back guru, man. He coached Marshawn. He coached CJ Anderson. He coached Shane Vereen. He coached, you know, a bunch of backs. So he saw something in me. And he just kept developing me, working within me. And then, you know, it's crazy, bro. He ended up getting fired, unfortunately. So that's when I kind of put myself out there. Yeah, well, well. so first of all, I think that that's a good lesson um, in itself. Because, again, like, you know, there's all the, there's the star ratings and everything else. But I that's one thing I've always liked about you and your story is like, you know, two-star recruit or, you know, not – you're kind of overlooked maybe – um, yeah. But that didn't stop you from continuing to pursue any opportunity that came your way. You make the most of it. And that's what I was going to ask you. What, what led into your decision? Because now it's a little bit easier to transfer and, and all these other things with the transfer portal. Um, and I'm kind of curious on your thoughts on that. But but what what uh, went into your decision as far as looking for your next home after you see Davis? And, uh, and just, again, what are your thoughts on the transfer portal? And now it probably being a lot easier than it was for you maybe back yeah. in the day. No, for real. So, yeah, no, first of all, I want to say thank you, man, because, yeah, it was a ton of hard work that, you know, that went all into all of this. So, yeah, bro, I started thinking about transferring. I remember kind of like towards like the end of my second year at Davis, I was like, man, like, I really want to compete at a higher level. And I want to put myself in the best position, you know, to, to hopefully Lord willing get drafted one day. So that was my mindset, you know, for me, man. Seeing, you know, our coach get fired, seeing the whole staff leave, I felt like that that was just like an open door for me to just, you know, transition into that next step. But it wasn't easy, you know. Like you said, at that time, bro, the transfer portal is completely different. Yes. Like you can't – there was – it's like free agency now. Mm-hmm. But back then, it wasn't like that. You know, you had to sit out a whole year if you wanted to transfer. And it was just – if you were a transferring athlete, it seemed like if, if like – there was mm-hmm. something wrong with you, or as if like, oh, right, you're, oh, as if there's a reason as to why, yeah, the, there's yeah. like a stigma kind of behind it, yeah, yeah. exactly. It was so mm-hmm. frowned upon. So yeah, no, I was in there and it was dry, man. It was dry. It was dry for about <laughs> four or five months. Dang, yeah, okay, I know, crazy. Then I got a hold of Deshaun Foster. He was the running backs coach there. You said, mm-hmm. got a hold of him, man. <laughs> I can't believe you picked up. That was crazy. <laughs> so, yeah. What do you What do you get? Is you got his number? You're DMing him on Twitter. Yeah. How, so, how yeah. does that work so, out? So what ended up happening was I called the front office desk. Okay. I <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hey, you do what you got to do, though. It you works. That to. works. You have they to. Have the, they had their number on their website. So I was like, all right, cool. So I called them, but then like, all right, we're gonna transfer you to Defoss, but he still has to pick up. Right, right, right. He did, okay. and he, he picked up, and I was like, oh, sure, here he is. So I was like, I got to sell myself. <laughs> so then You I got talked. him on the phone, and then you're like, oh, I didn't expect to make it this far. Yeah, once I got on the phone with him, I was like, all right, it's time for me to, like, mm-hmm. it's like an interview. So yep. I told him why I was leaving, you know, what I was looking forward to doing. And then, you know, he was listening, and he told me, he's like, okay, so just shoot me your highlight tape. He's like, I want to see what you can do. So I made sure to get that to him, man. And yeah. He messed with it. And it's crazy, bro. That's how I ended up there. But the second part of your question, how do I feel about the transfer portal now? Mm-hmm. Man, to be honest, it's crazy. It's like it's literally like free agency. So the players nowadays have a lot more influence and a lot more like leverage, I would say. Yeah. In terms of exactly their futures, which is a good thing. 
mm-hmm. because coaches before this stuff happened, coaches were able to leave whenever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if I was a coach and I recruited you, and I was like, hey, I sold you, like, hey, you're gonna start, you're gonna play for me, da 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 da. And the next year you get offered a head coaching job at like Oklahoma or something. Right. And you leave, it's like, dang, now a new coach comes in and he may recruit someone else to take your spot. So, mm-hmm. you know, they've been doing that. I, I know I, that's a good, and I mean, the transfer portal is kind of what was ideally kind of made for situations like yours, where you're like, my, my coach is gone. Like, yeah. hey, that's the whole reason why I came here. Or, you know, what, like, I, I don't know what's going to happen here. So let no, me, if, if, if I got to be in a different situation, let me pick the situation I want to be in at least. Yeah, <laughs> no, it, that's what, exactly. And I feel like for that, definitely. But I also mm-hmm. at the same time, though, you are seeing some athletes abuse it where it's like you go somewhere mm-hmm. it's like, oh, I'm not playing here. All right, I'm going to leave. Yeah. I'm not playing here again. It's like once you're somewhere and you're not playing, I don't know. It just kind of feels like a scapegoatish to be like, all right, I'm going to just go ahead and leave instead of just trying to work and grind. Yep. But every circumstance is different, though. There's some politics that go into it. <laughs> so I've heard. Yeah, so I've heard. So I've heard. Um, <laughs> But – but going back to Deshaun Foster, though, real quick, yeah. tell me tell me how important that relationship was to you then. Obviously, it started with the with the phone call, but <laughs> how how that blossomed and and how you've kind of become now. I don't I don't I'm assuming you saw his Twitter graphic where he had the four of you guys, the four <laughs> you running backs on there, I believe. So you're the first one, right? It was you, then yeah. um then Dimitri. Dimitri, and then and Britton then Brown, Britain. and then Zach. Yeah. So, so just tell me a little bit about again your relationship with Foster and and what and what he's doing because I think it's special. He's producing that's that's four straight running backs in four straight years. Um, just tell me about Foster and what he means to you. Yeah, no, man, that's that's the big homie. <laughs> that's my <laughs> that's my guy, bro. Like honestly, we connected as soon as I got there. We really connected. He wasn't about you know talking and all that stuff. He's like, you just got to show me what you can do. And he's like, if you can go out here and play, I'm going to give you a shot. So, you know, that's what I was doing, just earning his trust, going out there competing. And he always kept it real, man. You know, if I ever had, like, bad games, bad moments out there in the practice field, he he would let me know. He would correct it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he just always kept it real. So you can appreciate coaches who keep it real with you because you know where you stand as a player. But, yeah, as a man, bro, I have a lot of respect for him. You know, he really taught us a lot off the field. You know, he taught us a lot about his perspective as a player, his perspective as an NFL player, his perspective, you know, off the field, handling stuff. So, yeah, man, he's a guy I go to when I have advice, mm-hmm. looking for counsel in the NFL, looking for like, hey, how'd you handle this? Like, how you handle your money? How'd you do this? So, you know, he's a great resource for me, man. We're really close. And, you know, every time I'm at UCLA, I try to see him as much as I can. So, yeah, man. Smoke 26. Fox. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about it. And it, so it was interesting. So before we did, uh, before we hopped on, I'm like, let me see what Josh is up to nowadays. Because, I mean, I know you're with the Chargers. I know, all, I obviously, I know, I know you're going to be doing the camp. But I'm like, let me just check just in case he messed around. He got married or... Or yeah. he's doing something big or something. And I'm like, I didn't hear anything about it. So I'm just like, but let me just check. Let me do my due yeah. diligence. And I go on your Instagram and I'm like, Josh got married. I'm yeah. like, wow. You got, I was like, wow, go ahead, Josh. I, I didn't know yeah. anything about it. Um, I believe that was in April or sometime earlier this year. Uh, just tell me a little bit about that and what that moment meant for you. Yeah, no, it was, it was uh, late March. So March mm-hmm. 24th. And that was crazy because I've met Michaela, who's my wife. I met her at UCLA. Okay. Was she an athlete as well or just a classmate or? She was just a student. She was okay. a student. But, you know, man, it's it's impressive, bro, for students to get into UCLA because yeah. I could yes. No yes. doubt. If I was an athlete, I for sure wouldn't be at UCLA. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, yeah, that's how we – so we met. And it's crazy because Josh Woods isn't here yet. Yeah. But, like, he was there <laughs> – you know, the first day we actually met. Wow. Was, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I didn't know that. I was that. with him. I was with Chris Barnes. Oh, you were running with that crew. Okay. I, yeah. yeah. Josh <laughs> tells us all. Of, Josh, we'll talk more about that after that. Okay. Okay. Oh, we will, for sure. I was with them, too. <laughs> and they're like, yo, we're going to Austin Roberts. You know, Austin played at UCLA, too. He's like, we're going to his little birthday. He okay. has a little kickback going on. So I was like, oh, cool. So I tagged along, and then we were there. And then, you know, I just see her. And I was like, oh, man. 
but she's really fine. <laughs> yeah. So then we we hit it off. We start talking, and then yeah, man, get a chance to know each other. And then like you said, like man, we got married two two three months ago. Yeah. But yeah, bro, the marriage was awesome. The wedding was great. It looked great. Yeah, it was it was awesome, bro. It was the best night of my life. I had a lot of fun, and man, like just leading up to it, it was a little bit stressful because you want to make sure everything goes correct, but. Mm-hmm. But once you're in that moment, it's like, ah, this is amazing. This is nice. <laughs> a different type of stress than uh, maybe trying to produce a 100-yard game or playing against <laughs> USC or something, right? <laughs> no, for sure. I would, I would actually, I would tell you this, bro. I was more nervous that entire week, especially the day of, than okay. playing a game. Because, you know, when you're playing a game, to an extent, there's a lot that's in your control. Right. But the wedding is like, you don't, you don't know. Like, yeah. <laughs> some things are out of control. It's like, right. you got to make sure. People around you are on top of it. Mm-hmm. Coordinators, everything, dress code, uh, food, everything, bro. <laughs> so it was, it was kind of more stressful on her because she planned everything. Right, but it was still like nerve wracking. <laughs> no, uh, I, I bet, I bet. So I saw the, I saw the video you had on Instagram. Um, I saw Foster was there in, in the crowd for it. Um, but then yeah. I also saw uh, a, a, a previous guest of this podcast, Shay Pitts. Was 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 in the video, and I'm looking at the video, and I'm like, "How did Shay Pitts find his way into this wedding?" Yeah. Tell me about your relationship with Shay, and and um, how good a friend you guys are. Yeah, no man, me and Shay are we're very very close. So my first day on campus, <laughs> he was like one of the first dudes. Yeah, it was crazy. He was mm-hmm. one of the first dudes who really like came up and spoke to me, and we started talking. It was just his energy. Like, yep. He definitely energy. got energy. If anything else, he definitely has the energy. No, he has energy and his genuine, authentic, like, energy. Like, Shay is really himself. Mm-hmm. So it's funny. Like, we kind of just really just hit off. We were talking, man. And he told me, he's like, yeah, like, I'm from Calabasas or Gore Hills. Because I went to Oaks Christian. And I was like, oh, dang. So mm-hmm. it was really cool, man. Like, he's been a great dude, great friend. And, like, man, I love his family. His people are really nice, they're really cool. And nah, man, he's a great dude. So we've been close, bro. We've been, we've been really just like it's kind of crazy. It's like having that little cousin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's what I feel like <laughs> he he's definitely a character, um, for sure. Uh, speaking about some of your other teammates, you kind of mentioned some of them already. Um, with Chris Barnes, Josh yeah. Woods, and I know Lakenny was always kind of hanging around with them as well. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about them and and what kind of characters they were because I know we get stories from 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 Josh Woods all the time, but I want to hear from your perspective as an offensive player. Tell me a little bit about those guys and and were were they goofballs? Were they serious about their business or or just tell me about the dynamic of them because I I, I know Josh obviously and I know Lakenny pretty well just even from covering him in high school a little bit so i know just those two they're they're characters but tell me about yeah. them and chris barnes no they bro they're they're funny so i'll start off with uh <laughs> woodsy woodsy, <laughs> woodsy was funny man so when i first got there man he was big like he was really big <laughs> like bro like he bro this dude had like his hair was so long like he grew it out at the time and like he was playing like i heard he played like everything in high school because he played at upland Mm-hmm. That's right. I heard he played like running back, receiver, defense. Like he's playing everything. So now it was cool, bro. Like I was like, damn, this dude's really good. But also, like, it's so funny how like so LA he is with just like diehard Lakers fan, diehard yep. Kobe fan. Mm-hmm. Like, Kobe's his guy. He thinks he's like Kobe's the goat. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, bro. And I'm with them on that because Kobe to me is yep. like for sure. No doubt but he's about a it, good dude, bro. He's funny. <laughs> and I know, bro. It's just interesting how like. Time passes by like he's in my same class, class of 15. Mm-hmm. It was crazy. And then you got Chris, who at the time was a lot more like he was a little bit more introverted, quiet, serious. Yep. That but sounds about good. right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a good dude, though, man. Like, I, I like Chris Barnes. He's a good player, bro. Like, mm-hmm. remember all the field going up against him one on ones, all that. Like, this dude was really like he was like that. So, yeah. Nah, he's impressive, man. He's doing his thing in Green Bay. Mm hmm. So yeah, he's a good dude. And then obviously Canes and <laughs> bro, Lil Kenny and Lenny are great dudes, but they're goofballs for sure. <laughs> they are, bro. We've had some funny moments, you know. <laughs> he's hilarious. But I think one of the best memories I have of us is this was our like our last year. And 
the season's not starting off well, and we have a players only meeting. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't starting off well. And it go ahead, go mention this players meeting because I think yeah. this might be the same one Josh has mentioned before. Too. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so we had those players only meeting, and everybody, I'm telling you, it's Josh, it's Kenny, it's Chris. We're all up there just voicing our frustrations. Mm hmm. Kind of like ripping them, like, bro, like, you guys are not playing hard. You guys are not working hard. You're not. It doesn't seem like we have that, like, urge to get better. Mm -hmm. Like, when? And I go up there and I <laughs> I have my little thing. I haven't. I went off. Let's just which say which is surprising to say. And I still imagine that you did it with a smile. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it, started, it started off that way. Okay. Then I, I turned up real quick because. It was just frustrating because I'm like, man, like at that time we we had lost, and I was like, dang, we lost to San Diego State. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no way. I'm just like, bro, I'm tired of losing. I'm tired of like dudes not caring. So then it was it was a frustrating moment for us. That team, that players only meeting was crazy. But was, yeah. was this before? I'm trying to remember if you were there that season. Was this the right before the Washington State game? Yeah, this was before all that. Yeah, yeah, okay. This was before that, and then we turned it around. Yeah, we had some that, That's when I started covering the team. I came in the week of the Washington State game, and I'm like, "Oh, this is gonna be a fun ride." If y'all doing playing that a game comeback, like that, that comeback was crazy. Yeah, it gave us some momentum for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, to finish that season a lot better than when we started. But now, you look at what Chip and them are doing at UCLA now. Man, they're not only on the map, but, you know, they're one of the best teams in the nation. Yep. So it's going to be great to see how far they can go, man, because I really feel like they can really make a run here with the, the best of the teams. It, it, it's, it's what me and Josh talk about all the time about the time period that you guys were all kind of there is that you guys had to, to crawl so that the UCLA teams now had to had to run with Chip Kelly the way that they are. So don't don't cut yourself short on, on some some of that credit there, because. Because you you guys you guys you know you guys went through it there um, before they saw some brighter days. Uh, we're gonna get you out of here here in a minute. Um, we Josh Woods is not here yet. He's probably still kind of wrapping some stuff up, so we may not get him this time. We'll definitely love to have you back on the podcast again. But some yeah. of the questions that Josh and I always ask, there's like three questions. We'll try and we'll try and get through them. All right. So, who is the toughest player you played against? Whether someone on the UCLA team or someone on an opposing team. For for Josh Woods, I believe he always says his was Christian McCaffrey. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good that's a good one. He was eating dudes up. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see. The toughest. Or even if it's someone in practice. Even if it's someone in practice. Hmm. Someone in practice. Let me see. I want to think about this because we have some dudes mm -hmm. on our team. Ah, oh, man. Even across the league, there's been some dudes. I'm like, all right, that dude's really good. Um, You never went up against, uh, is it Kenny Clark? No, I missed them. Okay. Probably missed, for the better. Probably for the better, though. <laughs> I know. I missed all the dudes. I missed him. I missed yeah. Miles Jack. I heard Miles Jack was incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Josh. Josh talks about Miles Jack all the time. Yep. Yeah, and I heard he was, like, different. Mm -hmm. Let me see. You probably had like Quentin Lake. Yeah, we had uh, him. Blaylock. Darnay. Those are some of the deep. Darnay. Darnay's probably got to be up there for you, for I would sure. imagine. Definitely. At UCLA, for sure, Darnay. Yeah. Chris. And it was crazy in the league, man. Probably Derwin James. Okay. Mm hmm. Dude is yeah, like that. <laughs> that's, a, that's a tough one. Yeah. Uh, he, he's, he's like that. Him. And let me see. You got a lot of linebackers back there. You guys have like, or you guys have like Khalil Mack, don't you? Yeah, yeah. You no, got yeah. both. You got Bosa. Are you you're going up against those guys? Like it's different because I don't really go up against them because they're right. playing against the edge. Okay, right. So right it's right, a right. little different. I'm trying to think of like linebackers in the league. Ah, uh, man, because there's so many. Yeah, there. That's that's for sure. Let me see. I think <clears throat> for sure Derwin's up there. Oh, Micah Parsons. Yeah, Michael Parsons is he's he went dude. up against him during training camp. Okay. Yeah, that's that's the guy. I think that'll be number okay. one. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good deal. Good deal. Um, and then one of the other questions we have is who were some of the funniest dudes on the roster at UCLA while you were there? 
players, dudes on the <laughs> You can name like three or four, however many you want. Oh man, Jay Shaw. Okay. Was really hilarious <laughs> to me. Okay. <laughs> he was very funny to me. Um <laughs> who else? There's a lot of dudes who was funny. Um there's a name that everyone we've talked to has mentioned. I'm not gonna tell you yet, but I, I'm because I'm curious to see if, if you'll mention him. I'll mention it. Yeah. Oh man. Dang, I might not, but now I feel like more pressure. Let me remember. It's okay. It's okay if you don't, but it's just hilarious that everyone names this dude. And for me personally, as someone in the media covering you guys, I would have never thought in a never million guessed. years, I would have never thought he would have been the funniest dude in the locker room. Uh, let me see. Oh, what's his name? It was really funny. Boss. Boss. Boss was funny. Boss I, was hilarious. He, I've heard a few people mention him. He was pretty funny. Let me know if you want me to tell you who the other one is. Let me see. Okay. I'll, I'll name another guy that was hilarious to me. Okay. Um, at the time, it was Denzel Fisher. He was funny. Okay. Oh, uh, let me see. I'm trying to, I'm trying to it's think. Someone, it was someone on defense. Oh, someone on defense. Let me see. He was probably like a underclassman by the time you were there. Was he? Um, yeah. He was underclassman? He, last year was his last year. Oh, last year was his last. Let me see. <laughs> <On defense? Yes. laughs> Let me think. <laughs> Let me see. Damn, I'm drawing a blank. I, I feel like okay. when you tell me, I'm gonna be like, okay, yeah. all right, I'm gonna tell you, Martin Andrews. Mar oh, 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 Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Martin was hilarious. Everyone has named Martin like within the first two or three names. And I'm just like, I, I wish like we would have gotten that with Martin. I feel like we didn't get a whole lot of that with Martin. Obviously, he was going through his injuries and stuff. But I just I'm just that's one of the guests we got to get on here is Martin. But Martin, you do. He's Martin's hilarious. A dude. He's, a, he's a good dude, man. He now that you mention it. There was a lot of moments of laughter <laughs> at training table. Yeah, there was. Okay. He was, <laughs> <laughs> he's actually a very funny dude, bro. That you mentioned it now, I'm thinking about him like, dang. I swear I forgot. It was Martin. Martin? Yep. Boss was hilarious, too, though. Boss like, was hilarious. Like, Boss was hilarious. People do. <laughs> <laughs> Boss was very funny. <laughs> All right. All right, Josh. We'll, we'll get you out of here on that. Thank you again so much. Um, Again, do you want to just quickly maybe give us some of the details again for your camp? when it's going to be, where it's going to be, and uh, and maybe some of the details about what they can expect being a part of this camp, whether it's for this year or maybe for years in the future. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt, man. Hopefully, Lord willing, man, we get more of these camps. Mm -hmm. And um, this is going to be special because it's the first one we're kicking it off. So, yeah, now I just want to say shout-out to my wife, Michaela, visionary behind it. Mm -hmm. Shout-out to Wasserman. They really kind of helped me put this thing together, play fair as well. Wani and the crew, they really helped this out. And um, yeah, man. So this camp's gonna take place East Side High School in Lancaster, California. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. That's where I'm. I'm a matter is so it's gonna be dope, man. And you know we're gonna have a good time. You know the first group is ages six to twelve. Okay. Second group ages thirteen through sixteen. So it's gonna be fun, man. We're gonna have a great time. We're gonna be over here teaching fundamentals, competing as well. So it's gonna be good, though, man. We're gonna have some you know goodie bags, snacks, all that stuff available. And yeah, just trying to, you know, bring the community together and trying to like play football and help these guys, man, get prepared for the next level. Some of them want to go do that. So yeah, man, just trying to, you know, have some fun, man. So I'm excited. Hey, Josh, that's what it's all about. And this has been fun as well. We'll try and get you back on sometime very soon uh, when we can get Josh Woods on here as well. Yeah, no, we we have to, man. We'll do that next time. Awesome. We'll make sure you and Woodsy are there. <laughs> awesome. Sounds good, man. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Of course, man. Appreciate you, dog. Thank you. You have a good one. And thank you again to Joshua Kelly for joining us on the podcast this week. Uh, very nice of him to come and join us and also to be hosting his first camp. I think that's a very exciting news for him. And obviously, he has a lot of other exciting things going on in his life. So we'll be catching up with Joshua Kelly again in the future. But something else to look forward to in the future is the Big Ten Conference move for UCLA. As they get ready to make the switch in 2024, that schedule was released and it's going to be a packed schedule. 
There is no doubt that UCLA will be in for a busy 2024 season. Obviously, the 2023 season will be the last year in the Pac-12 before they move to the Big Ten. But once they get into the Big Ten, they will be introduced right away to what the Big Ten has to offer. And I think maybe it might have even been part of the Big Ten's plan. I mean, I don't know how they go about putting the schedule together, but maybe it's not a coincidence that they have such a packed schedule with a lot of Big Ten teams, some of the bigger teams and more notable teams in that conference going to be playing against UCLA. They want to maybe get into that LA market right off the bat and make their presence felt. And what better way than to get a team like Ohio state in the Rose bowl for a game against UCLA right in the first season. What an introductory that will be. Now we don't know the order that these big 10 games will be played in, but it's going to be fun nonetheless. And let's see, I have the schedule here. We'll talk more about, the schedule when Josh Woods comes back um, next week. But I just want to give you guys a quick rundown of what the schedule looks like for 2024 and for 2025. It's not going to be easy for UCLA, but I think based on what you guys were saying on Twitter, it sounded like you guys were okay with the tough schedule. And I think if things go their way for UCLA, they win some of these games. Maybe there's an upset or two. This schedule really allows them to kind of even be in the national championship picture. Maybe that sounds crazy. Maybe the national championship isn't the right thing to say. Maybe the college football playoff is the expectation. But there's no doubt if they win some of these games and can go on a run, and maybe you're looking at a guy like Dante Moore leading the way at quarterback in his sophomore year when this takes place, but they could be in line to make some noise and potentially uh, have a run in, into the playoffs. Now, that's a long ways away, but here's what's on the schedule for sure. They're going to be traveling to Hawaii to open the season in 2024 to begin non-conference play. They'll come back the following week and play Fresno State at home at the Rose Bowl before traveling to LSU to finish out non-conference play. So that's 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 a, a pretty risky way, if you ask me, even considering maybe, maybe it's for the better, considering the way this schedule played out, this non-conference schedule played out for them in, what was that? I guess that would have been 2021, 2022. I can't remember the exact date. Um, I guess it was, I want to say it was 2021, but they had Hawaii at home. They had Fresno State at home, and then they had LSU at home. So now that's not the case this year. And from what we remember, if we remember correctly, that was Fresno State that got the win over UCLA with that big game from Jake Hayner and DTR battling back and forth at the quarterback position. Now, that was a week after UCLA had just played LSU. If you guys remember, that was the Sissy Blue game and everything that went on with that. That was a big night game for UCLA and came up with the upset against LSU that night with head coach Ed Orgeron leading the Tigers into the Rose Bowl. Now, will that be the case in 2024? That remains to be seen. But now here's the Big Ten conference schedule. And we'll break it down by the home games and the away games. And then we'll leave it there. We'll jump into 2025 and then leave it there for now until we get Josh's thoughts sometime next week. Now, the home games for the Big Ten Conference when UCLA makes the jump to the Big Ten in 2024. At home, they're going to be hosting rival USC. They're going to have Ohio State, Northwestern, Nebraska, and Minnesota. They're going to be traveling to Indiana, Iowa, Michigan, and Rutgers. Rutgers and Nebraska are going to be the, the two common teams that are going to be on the schedule for 2024 and 2025. Those two teams are slotted as games for UCLA in the first two years. Now, it doesn't get any easier with the conference or with just the schedule as a whole in 2025. They're going to be hosting Georgia at the Rose Bowl to start the season. If, I, if I'm reading this correctly, um, I'm looking at the notes that I made here, and that's a uh, it's going to be a game to to open the season with for sure. Um, that can go a bunch of different ways for UCLA. And then they're going to be traveling to UNLV. And then they're going to be finishing up the non-conference schedule with New Mexico. Now, the non-conference stuff can change. It's kind of a little bit, you're, you're a couple years within it being a little hard to change some of these. But that doesn't mean these games cannot be moved around in the future. So there's a lot of time between now and then. But now if we get into the Big Ten conference schedule. The home games are going to be Wisconsin, Rutgers, Purdue, and Maryland. And then you're going to have 
away games at USC, Penn State, Nebraska, Michigan State, and Illinois. So it's going to be very, very busy for UCLA, and they're going to have to get the job done. But I think if they do get the job done, there's an opportunity for them to be a real contender at the national level. So we'll leave it there. We'll leave you guys with a little something to think about. When Josh Witch comes back next week, we'll talk with him and get a lot of this stuff figured out because there's a lot of traveling that has to be done, and I'm excited to get Josh's perspective on that whole situation. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for tuning into the podcast. Hope you guys enjoy. Make sure you subscribe or tell your friends, share it. Make sure you guys let them know about your favorite UCLA football podcast. Now, with that being said, as I mentioned before, thank you guys so much for your support. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you, everybody.